another unboxing video. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up and how to use the EWM34. It's a mobility scooter by E-Wheels capable of holding up to 300 pounds going 4 miles per hour and up to 10 miles on a full charge. When fully disassembled, the heaviest piece weighs only 29 pounds. I'm going to show you how to disassemble it, assemble it, and how to get started. If you order one online, it ships to your home, free shipping and tax free. It comes on a wooden crate. All you have to do is take it off the wooden crate and then begin to cut open the box using a box cutter, a knife, or a pair of scissors. At the very top, there are some staples. You should be able to pop it open. In this case, it was already popped open, uh, but the straps were holding it together. From the top, just like any package that we get, you normally see styrofoam molding, and that's a good sign. That means the manufacturer, E-Wheels, is trying to keep their product protected during the shipping process. Here we have the seat post. This is where the seat falls into. It has a male and a female. This is the female receiving end. The seat falls right on top. We'll show you how to put that together. So what I'm going to do is kind of start to take things out one at a time, starting with the battery, which is at the very top. I'm going to take out the styrofoam molding. Okay, and it looks like we've just got some plastic on the back shroud and then up towards the front we have a basket standard basket which clips on I recommend keeping all of your packaging intact at least for the first few days so that you can make sure that your product is in operating condition if it's not you will have to ship it back and keeping the uh, Box and styrofoam is going to be great if you have to ship it back. So I'll take out some more styrofoam and begin to reveal the rest of the scooter. It looks like we have a box here, and I'm guessing we have the charger. Standard charger with an XLR port. We'll show you how to use that here in a bit. Now resting on the deck, we have the seat. It's a compact seat. It's made for traveling. It's a folding seat with the option to uh, rotate, it looks like. This was on the, uh, the male end of the seat post connector. Just take it off, it's to protect it. Put that off to the side, and at this point, the scooter is um, pretty much fully exposed. We've got a, we have to bring the tiller back a little bit, which is done, I'll show you, there's a knob here that I'm rotating to keep the tiller in place, and then allows me to slide this piece of card or styrofoam out. But this um, tiller adjustment knob, you can rotate the knob counterclockwise, and it's going to allow you to position the tiller in a either forward direction if it's too far back or if it's too far forward you can bring it closer to you or if you're transporting it you can just bring it all the way down and then tighten it so that basically it doesn't wobble around and hit the floorboard and damage your throttle sensors here when you're transporting it in the trunk of a vehicle which sometimes the ride can get a little bumpy so that's what that's for now I'm going to loosen this knob again and bring the handlebar all the way up, aka the tiller. This entire front section that I'm working with is called the tiller, and here are the handlebars. Now on the display on the dash, we have a standard battery meter, a key ignition slot, and a speed adjustment knob. We also have two buttons, one for the horn and one for the lights, and then the standard 
seesaw-like throttle system to go forward and backwards with either one hand or using both. But you can use either your left hand to do both forward and reverse controls, or you can use your right hand by itself. It's made for ambidextrous use. Now there is an easy way to get this out of the box that doesn't require picking it up. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, I'm gonna rotate the box. I'm gonna ask my cameraman to move to the front. Now that I have the box facing forward, the trick would be to cut out the sides. So just carefully grab a knife or a utility cutter and don't cut the scooter. Carefully run the knife up the edge so that eventually you can get to the point where you can slide the scooter forward, drive it right out of the box. Now that the uh, front of the box has been cut out, all you really need to do is get the plastic sheeting away from the tire so it doesn't get caught up. And then you can literally roll it right out. You'll want to take out the two front blocks of styrofoam. It's pretty lightweight, so I just picked it up. You may need help with that part. And then underneath, you're going to see a couple of uh, armrests. Grab those so that you don't run them over. Now, in the back, we're gonna find the drive mode switch. It's in drive mode, has to be in drive mode to operate the motor with the battery, but we're gonna put it into neutral or freewheel mode. So that's facing forward. Now it's, I can push it. Just, there's a piece of styrofoam in the back put your hand on that piece of styrofoam to not have it drag out with the scooter and then push it forward with the other hand. All right, got the scooter out of the box, made some room. You might notice there's a little bit of styrofoam debris that uh, is on some of the parts. It's okay, it doesn't scratch it. It's just, you know, during the shipping process, sometimes the items get shook up a little bit, but that's what the styrofoam's for. It keeps it protected. So. Gonna go ahead and move forward with assembling the rest of this scooter. All right, we've cleaned up the space a little bit, made some room, dusted off the parts. It's normal to see a little bit of styrofoam flakes on the uh, parts themselves because during the shipping process, sometimes the items get moved around in the box, but that's what the styrofoam's for. It's doing its job. Um, inside of your package somewhere in the um, basket, you'll find a pin. It's um, a post pin. And what this is for is to basically set the height of your seat post sleeve and receiver. So what does that mean? Basically the seat is going to sit on this post. I'm putting it into the sleeve. You've got three options for height. If you go with the lowest hole, it's actually going to give you the highest height advantage you can get with this seat. So I recommend starting off with either the middle or the highest and then work your way down from there to see what's comfortable for you. Now that the seat post is in, we've all we had to do is just push this all the way through, make sure it lines up and goes through on the other side. At this point, you can grab the battery, which there's a handle for it to make it very easy. It's extremely convenient. It should just pop right in and rest into place as so. And then the seat, okay, this lever on the right needs to be pressed in while dropping it in. And that's gonna allow you to get the, the, fe the feature that you want to um, be able to rotate the seat. See, now it's locked in, and if you wanna rotate, you just lift the lever and then it locks into position, has about six different position or eight different uh, positions, including all the way backwards. So you can actually turn it around if you want it to just face backwards instead of actually turning the unit. 
and it goes a 360 degree rotation both ways. You do have to wiggle it a little bit to get it locked in, and of course you can fold the seat if you'd like, take it out just as easily by holding the lever up and pulling out. It is a little sticky, I will admit, compared to some of the other manufacturers. Um, it doesn't go in and out very easily. Maybe a tiny bit of lubrication, WD-40 would help that. We'll test it out and let you know in future videos, but it, it seems like it has a tiny bit of resistance, easy to work with and manageable. At this point, the scooter is pretty much fully assembled. All you have to do now is put the armrests on. So take the packaging off. And just like most of the scooters we work with, these work with tension adjustment knobs, which are in the basket with the user manual. Simply find the appropriate right-handed armrest and insert it into the port for the armrest located underneath the right side of the chair. Now, right now it's not going in because the tension adjustment knob from the underside is too tight. So just keep loosening it until you find enough room for that armrest to slide in. So it looks like you've got one tension adjustment knob as a backup and then two that are already on there, which is pretty nice. Rinse and repeat on the other side, loosen the knob. then retighten at the desired position. Only thing left to do now is to mount the basket, which the two sliding brackets here work with the top and the bottom set of hooks that are pointing up. Just press firmly against the back, slide down. This little clip holds it in place, so if you want to take it out, just press the, the pin back and lift up. All right, so something we've identified about this plate right here with this knob, it's not actually just used to secure the shroud. It's actually gonna help you secure the battery connection. So we've loosened it. I wanna show you these two silver posts here are actually the positive and the negative connection for this battery pack on the bottom, there's a reciprocating positive and negative connection, and it has to make contact in order for the scooter to get uh, power from the battery to the motor. When you place the battery pack on, you may notice that it's not firmly sitting because there's a big gap right here, and you don't want that big gap or else the battery connections aren't gonna make contact. So what I recommend doing is really making sure that the battery is leaning far back enough to where you can get connection and then maybe even with one hand leaving it there and then using your other hand to secure the bolt. Otherwise it's going to be really hard to get it to keep contact. So now this is pushing against the metal contacts and you've got power. You may have a hard time, that's why I recommend using one hand to tilt it back. See how it's keeping that contact tight as I lift here? So you keep it tightened with one hand and then use your other hand to tighten the knob. This plate, when it gets tightened, pushes down on the battery pack so that the contacts are making a firm connection. And that's how you're going to go ahead and take the battery pack out and put it back on. Now to take the scooter apart, it's a little tricky. It's not the most user-friendly setup, but the price point of this scooter is so low that it's almost worth it because you can save a lot of money to get a disassembling traveling scooter, even though it's not the easiest to work with. Now I'm going to show you how to take it apart. First, 
you need to unscrew the base of this connector. The base of this connector rotates, so you spin it counterclockwise. Pull out. You'll notice on this connector, there's about eight different holes and then a, a groove on this side, which matches up with the groove indent on the left side of the port. So that groove needs to fall in line with that um, groove port on the matching connection end. So that's step one. Actually, step two. Take the battery out, then remove the connector. At this point, you can lift this uh, kind of clip looking yellow clip thing and then pull up, grab the seat post, and start to pull back with the handle on the front and it just falls apart. Now the scooter is disassembled into four parts if we include the chair. We've got the chair, which we took off this knob earlier. I'm just going to put it back in. We were verifying that the knob was, in fact, the correct length. So earlier I mentioned you had three knobs, and that one was a spare backup. It's actually not the case. There's three knobs. Two are used for the armrest, and one is used for the battery adjustment um, compression, if you will, against the contact. Now, putting it back together is a little bit difficult. What we recommend doing is tilting it back all the way. I'm gonna move the chair. So tilting it back to expose these bars, one on this side, one on this side. Those bars are gonna be the, the uh, hook point for the bottom hook on each side. So I've hooked the bottom hook from the front end onto the exposed bar on the left and right side. You wanna make sure that this is in the up position and that your clip is also in the up position and watch what happens as I begin to lower the back end of the unit. Clicks right into place. So I'm gonna ask my cameraman to back out a little bit to give you a wider view of that process. First, you lift the clip, and then you kind of grab this, level, this mechanism with the clip and lift it up. You can use the other, your other hand to grab the front handle and pull apart. Now, from afar, to put it back together, you want to keep your eye on the prize. These posts, the bottom hooks on each side, get the bottom hook on those posts lined up just right, both sides, make sure the cable's not in the way, hold the clip up, drop into place. Next, you want to make sure that that notch lines up with the bump on the receiving end, the female connector. Screw this in. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's bring that clip down first and out of the way. Then we connect. Screw this in clockwise until it's tight. And we should be good to go. So, let's take the battery box, put it back over the connectors, and watch what I do here from afar. I'm going to grab the front of the battery, tilt it so that it's making a as much of a contact as possible before even plugging it in. Put this firmly on top of each side, the compression plate, so that it's pushing down on each side. Line it up with the screw hole for the knob, and tighten. Again, not the most user-friendly disassembling process, but for the price, you almost can't go wrong. Now the scooter has anti-tip wheels in the back. It's got really nice wheels for the front and rear. It's got a basket that comes off really easy. The lights in the front are pretty nice. You press the button on the right to turn them on, turn it off. It's got a low profile horn and it rides really nice. It goes up to four miles per hour, which is uh, a pretty average speed for a mobility scooter. 
All in all, this scooter is recommended if you're looking for a disassembling slash travel mobility scooter on a budget. If you want to learn more about it, such as specifications, warranty information, visit our website, mobilityscootersdirect.com. I'm Sergio. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Have a great day.